That means you just made a whopping $18.40 an hour. And in order to do it, you probably financed $80,000. everybody how we doing YouTube um, figured I'd put together a little video for you today I've actually been kind of planning on doing this for a little while um, haven't had the time really to put it together and I've kind of been doing a million and one thing people have asked me in the past hey you know I'm thinking about buying a few dumpsters what's your take you know are you killing it you making all kinds of money I say well I've got to make five thousand dollars before I make a dollar so if if you're gonna do it as a part-time gig you know realize that before you even get started, you gotta clear a lot of costs to make any money. More or less, when you get into this, you're gonna have your variable costs and your fixed costs, okay? Now, your variable costs are gonna be things that are gonna change consistently month to month. You're gonna have uh, your fuel, your dump fees, your marketing, uh, maintenance. There's a few other things that might get thrown into that. The, you can't really put a dollar amount. You can budget for them. You can plan, you know, based on previous months. But uh, those things can change dramatically month to month, and you just have no idea when it's coming. Your fixed cost stuff is stuff that has a, a monthly payment to it. You know, when you start the month off, this is this is coming up. You can cut the check on the first, call it a day. Um, anything financed, any kind of insurance, any kind of reoccurring payments. All that stuff is going to fit into your fixed cost model. Um, so when you get into this business, um, it's going to be one of two ways. Either you already have all the stuff and you're just looking to rent it out on the weekends. Great. 100% go for it. Uh, if something is already paying for the equipment or you have like a practical use for it at your day job or you own another business, there's pretty much no downside. Figure out how to do the dumpster rentals get involved in it, it's fantastic, right? And then there's the other guy. Um, basically what I did, but my process was uh, more or less the parachute from getting out of my work life. Um, so I just rolled the dice, bought three dumpsters, said, hey, let's figure this out, and um, quit my job. <laughs> I did it in a unique fashion. We'll get into that story one day. Um, I've had a few people contact me. They say, hey, I'm thinking about doing what, what you did. I want to get, you know, the truck. I want to get the, the trailers. I want to start renting them out on the weekends. I still have my day job. It would be, you know, side money for me. So this would be the breakdown of how I would explain it to them if I have the whiteboard in front of me, right? You, let's say you want to buy a truck, okay? So your truck should be a three-quarter ton, okay? Three-quarter ton is your 2500 class okay you want to have that or bigger now if you're in the cdl category infinite options if you're not in the cdl category my personal recommendation is going to be a 2500 maybe a single wheel 3500 but i think when you get into the dualies you start getting more truck and less weight in the dumpster and it just it tit it tilts the scales too much. I think 2,500, at least in my case, I live in Florida, so I can't speak for the guys in the mountains and stuff like that. Um, 2,500 is fantastic. Hauls every pound that I ever need it to under uh, 26,000 pounds. Keeps me under CDL. Life's good. 2,500 truck. Very expensive these days. Okay. You might be able to find one pre-owned for 30 grand that you might be able to finance, but pretty much all of them are going to be 40 grand plus most of them, especially if you're looking new, are going to be fifty to seventy thousand dollars. Okay, if you're new to car payments, that translates into a pretty big payment. So realistically, your truck on the low end is probably going to be five six hundred bucks, but more like seven hundred to a thousand dollars. Okay, in my specific case, my first truck I bought cash. Um, second truck I ended up financing. Trucks are actually one thing that I would say is probably the smartest thing to finance if you're going to finance anything because they generally carry the lowest interest rates, the best terms, um, and they're the easiest to get financed already. So my truck, the first one I got, I 
with a payment was 702, okay? Now, I was in a decent position. I cash bought my first dump trailer. I financed the second two, and I bought them in kind of peak COVID pricing. Uh, so they were not as cheap as I wish they were. I ended up financing $25,000. I'll, I'll put it in easy math. So let's say equipment. I financed $25,000 for five years. I had a payment, we're gonna call it 550. It wasn't exactly 550, but somewhere in the ballpark of. Um, then I had commercial auto, which if you're a first year in the dumpster business, could be crazy. My first quote was $23,000. Um, eventually found one for 13, signed up for that, worked for six months, found another one for eight, worked that, and after I think a year I went down a little bit. At any rate, my first, my first commercial auto insurance was over $1,000, but after it settled down a bit, my payment was 700. Oh, here, I didn't even write what the category was. Commercial auto. It was 790. Now that is gonna be very different depending on where you live in the country. Um, I'm in Florida and I'm close to Tampa, which has a generally higher rate than you know, somewhere if you might be out in the middle of the country, less auto accidents, things like that. Um, depending on your driving record, depending on the trailer, the truck, how many things you're insuring, what your deductibles, there's a million and one things that adjust that. I've heard guys that have it as low as $100 a month, which is ridiculous, but I would say if you're a fantastic driver, a couple years into the business, I generally see the guys are three, four, five hundred dollars when I'm in the groups online, stuff like that. Now, you're also gonna have to store the thing or the things, depending on the route you go. Um, but really, the, the more the merrier. But let's say hypothetical, three dumpster setup, right? So storage for three dumpsters, depending on where you live, once again, is gonna change. Um, could be as low as probably 50 bucks, as high as I'd say 150 for three pieces is fair. Um, so storage for me, would be 150 bucks. You have your CRM. So your, your CRM is your customer relations management tool. Um, that's gonna be what keeps hold of your clients, keeps you organized. I would definitely recommend getting one. You can get Docket as low as, I think, $55. DRS, I believe, as low as 150, maybe 200. Um, and then there's a few other programs. I've used Docket and DRS, both are great. I'm back into Docket now with their online web hosting, which is much more expensive. It's in line with uh, DRS, roughly speaking. I do like the Docket interface though. I think they're pretty fantastic. We're gonna go with um, three dumpster system. I'm gonna just go on the cheap end. We'll call it the, the low end of Docket, $55 a month. So if we just use these as, as our figures, okay? So a truck at 702, your equipment at 550, 790, commercial auto, storage at 150, and your CRM at 55 bucks. We have a total fixed cost of $2,247, okay? Now, for the sake of the rest of this video to make my life easier, I'm gonna call that 2250. Okay, now, variable cost. So the way that I look at variable cost, I try to keep an average and a little bit of a worst case scenario than a best case scenario, okay? So we got our fixed cost. Now, variable cost. Your fuel, your dump fees, your marketing, you could include a few more categories, but I'm gonna keep this video a little more simple just to get the ball rolling for you. Um, I figure, okay, your average job is in an area kind of average throughout the country. It's probably gonna be about 15 miles. So the thing about this business is every dumpster drop-off 
is essentially six trips, right? So you have trip to the customer, trip back to the shop, trip to the customer to pick it up, trip back to the shop, trip to the dump, trip back to the shop, okay? Now, as you get more efficient, as you get more bookings, you get to cut a lot of these steps out. You get to chain link your rentals, but you don't plan for being efficient. You plan for worst case scenario and then efficiency makes you profitable. So you're still doing these six trips, right? So that's 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15 and 15, okay? So essentially, oh, actually I take that back. I, I'm not gonna use 15 for the dump. I'm gonna call the dump five miles away. So we'll say it adds 10 miles total. So you're gonna be 70 miles of total driving per rental on average, okay? I actually, I'll, I'll run through the math real quick on this. Diesel and gas almost work out to be the same. Um, depending on what you average, where you're at in the country, I don't know. But for me, if you do the 70 miles math, okay, diesel right now is 495, gas is 339, right? So I'm averaging 10 miles to the gallon in my diesel, 10 MPG. The gas version on my roll off would probably be about seven MPG. So if I'm getting seven miles to the gallon, that's 10 gallons here at 339, total of 33.90. If I'm getting seven gallons here, I'm gonna not that, it was easy on the other one, 34.70. Okay, so within a dollar of each other, whether it's gas or diesel. So we're doing 70 miles on average, works out to be, we're gonna go $35, All right? One was 34 and change, the other was 33 and change. So $35 is our fuel. Then you have your dump fee, all right? So on every rental, it is gonna change. And on every business, you're gonna do this different. For my business, I, for my standard pricing, include one ton for every 10 cubic yards. So a 20 yard rental would include two tons, a 30 yard rental would include three tons, a 15 yard rental would be a ton and a half. Keeps it pretty simple, all right? That's generally what your customers are gonna average out to, by the way, um, about a ton per 10 cubic yards. And, you know, depending on the material could be a lot heavier, just keep an eye out. So I include, we'll call it one ton for a 10 yard rental, okay? So one ton is able to be used by the customer. So we're gonna assume worst case scenario, every time it's a residential job, so it's the most expensive stuff to get rid of, it's $85 a ton, all right? Now, if this ends up being construction, it ends up being a little less to dump and I still charge the same after the fact, but I always assume they're using the whole one ton, $85 a ton, $85 is gone right out off the bat. Okay. So for fuel and dump fees, we have a cost of $120. Depending on whether you're looking at this as a business owner or a business operator, you should also look at your time. All right. Your time is going to average out to generally about three hours in my experience per rental. Okay. So I would Average it at $25 an hour at $75, okay, in time. But I'm not going to include this in our figures because I'm going to assume you're a three dumpster business, you're an owner operator, this is you doing 100% of the work, and then you take home the benefits of what comes in at the end of the month, okay? So we're going to eliminate time, but I want you to be conscious of that. There's not a move you make in this business where you're not thinking about the fact that it's your time being used in that moment, okay? If a customer wants you to sit somewhere for 20 minutes, you are paying to be there at that moment. Everything is your time. How far is one landfill versus the other is the extra 40 minutes of driving 
worth the discounted rate on the tonnage, that kind of thing. What gets me to the next customer the fastest or the most efficient for that job, all that stuff. So we're gonna go, so fuel, we're gonna go 35, dump fee, we're gonna go 85, and then 120 is my cost per dumpster, okay? Now, generally speaking, people are gonna argue about this, in my experience, it's hard to rent out the same dumpster more than twice in a week, okay? So it's, it's, just, it's not even that you can't get enough rentals because there's people that can do it. It's just logistically hard to have customers filling the voids like a Tetris game, right? You're gonna have little bits of overlap where you gotta pick one up here, but it doesn't go there necessarily, or you just can't make, you can't make the shuffle work. So. Generally, I'd say per dumpster, you're able to rent it out twice a week, three times a week if you're really rocking it. Um, and then if you're doing better than that, then you shouldn't be watching this video anyway. Congratulations, you're a success. Um, go out there and, and kill it. So if you're a three dumpster business, okay, you're generally gonna be able to max out in that eight to 12 range per dumpster, which means on the high end, you're probably doing 30 dumpsters, okay? But on the realistic end, and what's gonna happen for probably a majority of people for at least the, the beginning stages, um, you'll be lucky to consistently put out 15 to 25 rentals in a month, okay? Now, for the sake of conversation, I'm just going to go with you're not pushing to be a rock star because this is a beer money weekend. I'm just trying to side hustle thing. So we're going to do the math like you're a three dumpster business. Okay. Let's say you're getting thir or 15 rentals a month. Okay. Now, you can get more than 15, you might hit 20, you might hit 25, but 30 is probably not necessarily your, your ceiling, but you're in the VIP club, there's not many places to go higher than 30, okay? So we'll say 30 to 40 is the top that you're probably gonna be able to turn with three dumpsters logistically, if you can get there, okay? But we're gonna go with 15, reasonable right in this scenario we're not paying for any marketing yet i'm going to leave marketing out because that's a whole nother can of worms um, we're just going to go with our fixed cost our variable cost word of mouth we know a lot of people we know a few people in construction that like to do remodels this that and the other three dumpster business i'm going to get my 15 rentals a month and let's see where we go from there okay so if you're doing 15 rentals all right, let's say hypothetically you're one ton included, okay? Three twenty-five dollars for your 10 yard rental, all right? Now you have a cost of one twenty dollars the second it sits. Now, could that go and be better? Yes, but let's, like I said, plan for the worst. So your 325, if we multiply that by 15, 325, it's gonna be $4,800, 4875, okay? But in order to get that 4875, you had to do that fuel and dump fee, those same 15 times, which was $1,800. Okay, so that's your gross, that's your net. Uh, sorry, no, that's, that's not your net, that's your expense. So let's say after you pay your fuel and your dump fees, you're at, okay. 
55. It's a little bit late at night. A little, a little slower up here than I wish I was. Um, so after you pay your fuel and your dump fees, you've grossed almost $5,000 on your 15 rentals. You're left with three grand, okay? Not a bad turn, but wait, we forgot about our fixed costs. We already bought our truck. We already got our equipment. So now you're taking your 2250 away from that, which leaves you, I'll just make this simple on myself, 2250, $825. Now, that $825, in order to get it, you had to do 15 rentals at three hours a rental, so 45 hours. That means you just made a whopping $18.40 an hour. And in order to do it, you probably financed $80,000. So congratulations. Now, this is the silver lining, okay? If you can take this same equation and go from the 15 rentals to the 30 rentals, okay? So you double your production. You only have to pay your fixed cost one time, but your variable costs are gonna be consistent, okay? You are gonna, you are probably gonna squeeze a lot more juice out of the lemon than I'm showing here from your variable cost, but I want you to always, always, always know you're spending the money and then be happy when you don't, right? If the money's gone, then you're only increasing your profit instead of chasing to lose your ass one day. Okay, so let's say you take it from the 15 rentals to the 30 rentals. All right, your $3,075 gets duplicated one more time. So your 4875 times two. So let's say you double it up. Now you're grossing 9750. Your expense on it was $3,600. That's your 1800 twice times two, 36. Then you take your 9750 oh, minus $3,600. That leaves you with 6150 minus your now fixed cost of 2250. And now, after everything is paid, rather than you being a bum and being broke, you're walking away with $3,900, okay? Now, that $3,900, let me clean this up. I know I got a lot of math here, okay? So 15 rentals. was like, I don't even remember the exact amount. We'll go with 875. Whereas 30 rentals is $3,900, okay? Now, can you get more than 30 rentals? Sure, can you pump that number, you know, much higher? Absolutely, okay? Um, in order to get that 879, you had to work 45 hours in order to get that 3,900, you had to work 90 hours. So the point that I'm coming to, ultimately, I know this has kind of gotten a little more long-winded than I wished. If you're gonna put in 90 hours, you're not, you're not doing a part-time side hustle anymore, <laughs> you know? Um, at that, I mean, you've invested the money in the equipment, you've got the truck, you've got the trailer, you're putting in more than a minimum wage job on top of your other income stream. If you want to do that, if you're single, you don't have you know kids you got to be home changing diapers for and all that, go for it, kill it. But 90 hours on top of an already you know crushing a job, it's too much. So this is this job is not a side hustle. Um, the, this job comes money comes from volume and time and effort and marketing and on top of just just to dive one step further to get to here we've spent zero dollars on marketing 
it's i'm not saying it's not possible because you could definitely do it but you you gotta i mean you kind of gotta spend money on marketing to be the guy doing the, the 30 rentals so take hundreds of dollars if not thousands away from your final number maybe not thousands but up to a thousand um i think is a, a reasonable marketing amount even for a small i actually i take that back i never spent a thousand with three dumpsters i think at a certain point you're overspending on marketing i generally sat between 300 and 600 dollars um in my busier months because i, I tried to get as much repeat and you know get friendly with the people that booked so that they kept booking type clients. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, if you're gonna spend the money, if you're gonna spend the energy, if you're gonna get the financing, there's better side hustles. Commit to it or don't do it. That's that's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I guess I can get into a little bit of budget on this one. No, I'll, I'll say budget on the next one. We'll do another video. So like and subscribe. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it if you've made it this far because this is quite a long video. Um, until the next one, guys. Have a good one.